So uh, let me start off with you, Mr. Garcia. The, the uh, Diversity and Inclusion Subcommittee submitted their recommendations on July 7th, uh, 2021. That's after the long two-year period you, des you described. It's been about a year since then. Uh, and I wanted to get your thoughts uh, on the progress that has been made. In your view, what, if anything, has changed about the overall state of diversity and asset management since you released these recommendations? And how would you rate the SEC's progress in responding to your recommendations? Sure. Thank you, Senator. Uh, first, it is remarkable that the AMAC, there were only two minority members on the whole committee, unanimously supported all of these efforts. And many of them come from the biggest institutions in this country. It has been extremely disappointing that here we are today, Senator, and only the two most least impactful items have been implemented. If I were uh, a teacher, I would give it an eye for incomplete uh, because not only did they do the two least impactful with very little fanfare, uh, but there's already been comments by the other commissioners that suggest that they want to have it, a discussion and a dialogue. And it sounds like from their own comments that they are supportive of most, if not all of them. And I believe the public deserves and we on the AMAC deserves if they're not going to be implementing them. Why not? We spent hundreds of hours under the guise that this FACA committee was relevant and important. And we sure would like to see a, a conclusion one way or the other, Senator. Yeah. Let me ask you, I, I think it's important to note that uh, using the excuse of fiduciary duty uh, to exclude women and minority-led firms runs contrary to the actual data. There's a large and growing body of evidence, including AMAC study, that shows diversely led firms outperform their non-diverse counterparts. So this is about the bottom line, I'm not even talking about any societal benefit, I'm just talking about the bottom line. Given this data, do you agree that a firm's diversity, particularly at the management level, is material information that investment advisors should be able to consider when making recommendations to their clients? Absolutely, and Senator, I'd go a step further. I would suggest that the elimination of women and minority-owned firms that have already been proven to perform just as well, if not better, than the non-diverse firms, by excluding them, you might very well be in violation of your fiduciary duty. Because after all, your duty is to source good managers, regardless of who they are. And so my view is by casting a very narrow net on purpose to bring up barriers of entry to exclude these firms is not right and is costing your clients. And last question to you, uh, does, uh, do you believe the SEC currently has the authority to implement these enhanced disclosures? Yes, sir. In fact, we worked very closely with many of the SEC staff, uh, legal staff, and one of the members of our subcommittee was a former SEC legal staffer. And we were very careful to make sure that everything that we recommended is within their lane of their authority. So that's already gone through the process or we would not have even recommended it. I would even suggest that one of the items, which is the pay to play rules, all we asked was to reevaluate it and to study it. My own view is it should be discarded entirely because all it does is favor other industries to the disfavor of the financial community. And as a person who has worked very hard, it just doesn't feel good to suggest that there are more people in my industry doing things they shouldn't do than any others. And Commissioner Peirce said it best when she said there are already laws on the books. Yeah. So I think about this question uh, uh, as a question of improving the bottom line, right? Uh, and there are many uh, elements of it. For example, years ago, uh, Chevrolet tried to sell the Chevy Nova in Latin America. Nova in Spanish means it won't move. Uh, I don't care how good a marketing plan you have. If you're trying to sell a car that won't, that's called it won't move, it's not going to do very well. That's just a simple example of language. But understanding language, business customs, culture in the C-suite and a senior executive management is helpful to the bottom line. I think about the Hispanic community that has uh, $2 trillion dollars domestic marketplace, younger by a decade than the rest of the population, growing exponentially. For bottom line reasons, 
I would want to be uh, on them like white on rice, uh, which means having individuals who understand uh, the nature of how you get greater market share. And, uh, and in doing so, there is a ripple effect of the benefit to those communities that if I can help my company make better investment decisions that would inure to the benefit of places in the country that they might not otherwise look like, uh, they would uh, have uh, opportunities for enhancement of economic opportunity for people there. So that's, that's in part how I look at this. Uh, Senator Scott. Uh, 